Bora TV. The world is thinking. And this ha is happening all at a point when sharks are really under threat. So for example, you have tons of recreational fishing that goes on. This is Mark the Shark Cortiano, who's a commercial fisherman off Miami Beach, uh, who makes his living by targeting, targeting sharks. That's what he does. Um, some of the sharks that uh, he's going after may actually end up getting new protections just in about a week um, from Florida. But right now, this is, this is how he makes his living. And for example, roughly 200,000 sharks each year are killed just by commercial fishermen off the United States. And then you have the explosion of industrial fishing that we've seen in recent uh, decades, where through accidental catch, known as bycatch, you have sharks like this thresher shark being accidentally caught when, in fact, fishing vessels are targeting tuna and swordfish. But sharks are also caught in their own right. As you can see, this is a photo that was taken on the dock of Kesanuma, a place I journeyed to in northeastern Japan that was actually very hard hit by the tsunami. But it's really the center of the Japanese shark fishery. And these sharks are prized for everything from the hearts of salmon sharks that are uh, kind of a treat in sashimi, as well as their, their meat itself, which is used for uh, fish cakes called hanpen. But really, shark fins are the most commercially valuable parts of sharks, and it's really what's driving uh, the fishing of sharks uh, worldwide. So here, this is a thresher shark in Mexico that's being finned. A lot of this trade is really happening in developing countries. So there I was reporting. I was actually, and one of the things I often do is kind of combine reporting on science as well as trying to look at policy and other pressures that are going on. So I was actually with scientists here going in uh, Belize, and I was looking at kind of what studies they were doing on sharks, but we actually visited the fish market, and I was able to talk to someone who had already sold the fins to this near shark that she, uh, she had brought in and was, in fact, couldn't find a market for the meat. And in the course of this, really the center of this trade is Hong Kong. So this is, this is obviously an area called Shark's Fin City, where you have 80% of all sh uh, shark fins at some point pass through Hong Kong, where they go to men like this, who's a shark fin uh, dealer, who, puts, who actually sends half of his fins to China and half of them uh, actually to Canada, where, uh, where there are a number, there's a large Chinese Canadian uh, community, and they're the ones who are consuming it. And so what you see is, in fact, a shark lobby that's emerged, people who are, are really kind of working on this. And it's an interesting coalition, as Nancy alluded to, since we've seen what's happened here in California with the ban of the trade, sale, and possession of shark fins. You have scientists like, for example, Neil Hammerschlag, who's the scientist who took this picture of an oceanic white tip, who are teaming up with advocates to try to see what can be done about shark protections. And, and one thing that's interesting is they're having kind of mixed results. They've been focusing on, say, for example, uh, species like hammerheads, where they've actually been able to you know, draw attention to them and, in fact, may end up getting some protections in Florida, but have been stymied on the international level. And they haven't had you know, as great success.